Good morning and welcome to the Sunday morning sermon for April the 28th of 2024. And we've been working our way through a series of messages entitled, I Love My Church. And this is the final ser uh, sermon in that series, number eight. And we're just going to kind of draw it all together, bring it all together with a sermon entitled, Why I Love My Church. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 is our focus verse it says god has given us the privilege of being born again so that now we are members of god's own family you know there's a big difference between attending a church service and belonging to a church family you can attend church week after week and never really belong to the family you need to understand that church is not a place that you go. Church is a family that you belong to. The scriptures tell us that God created the church for his glory and for our benefit. Specifically, God made the church to benefit us in five specific ways. Somebody asked you, why are you part of a church family? You didn't really uh, have to be here today. You could be home preparing to take your family on an outing or whatever else you might have planned for later today. You could be preparing for that, getting every set, everything all set up. But you're here. You're here on Sunday morning. Why? What does the church have to offer? Well, five things we're going to look at today. And every event that we offer as a congregation is designed to fulfill one of these five purposes. The first purpose is this. Church, my church helps me to focus on God. Are you easily distracted? I am. It's, it's easy to lose your focus, and it's, it's easy to go all day and not even think about God, even though you've been a Christian for many years. I mean, I could either have so much, be having so much fun that I, I forgot all about God, or I could be, have so much work to do that I simply would forget. God knows that we have a tendency to lose our focus. When God gave the Ten Commandments, one of those commandments was, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Every seventh day, refocus. That's called worship. Whenever we refocus on God and express our love to God, we're worshiping. The church helps me to focus on God. Matthew chapter 20, verse 2 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Why is this the most important commandment? To love God? It's important because it's what you've been created to do. You're made to love God. God knows you, God loves you, he created you, and he wants you to know him and love him back. One of the benefits of worshiping together is that it gives us a better perspective. Better perspective on our problems, better perspective on our life, because it, it helps us focus on how great God is. Isn't it possible to worship God, though, without being in church? Well, yes, sure it is. It's possible. But there is power in group worship. Would you rather sing by yourself at home, or would you rather be with a group of people? I'd rather be with a group of people singing together God's praises. It's a whole lot better with other people. There's power in group worship. Have you ever come to worship service and you didn't feel like coming? Sure you have. So have I. Have you ever come when you didn't feel like it and then afterwards you're glad you came? 
Many times when I least feel like worshiping or I least feel like singing and praying and looking to God's word, that's when I need it the most. So the first purpose of the church is to help me focus on God. But it's more than that. My church also helps me to face life's problems. Life is tough at times. It seems you're either in the middle of a problem or you just came out of a problem or you're getting ready to enter into a major problem. Because much of life is a series of problems. And as a result, we get discouraged, we get tired, we get fatigued, and we get drained. God never meant for us to go through life all alone. He wants us to have a church family for the support that we need. The Christian life is not a solo act. We draw strength from each other, and that's called fellowship. The second purpose of the church, worship and fellowship. That's where we support each other. It's like the really old illustration every pastor uses with the, the campfire. You know, if you've got a campfire and a whole bunch of hot coals in it and, and they all keep each other hot. But if you take one coal out of the campfire and set it off by itself, it soon grows cold. It loses its heat and it eventually burns out. If you take the coal and put it back in the campfire, it will get warm again and hot again. If you don't have contact with other Christians, other believers on a consistent basis, your heart will grow cold. Your spiritual fire is going to burn out. You're going to go dead spiritually. You need that contact with other people to give you the lift to give you the encouragement to keep on going. The Bible says the church is an extended family. The Christian without a family is like an orphan. Romans chapter 12, verse 5 says, In Christ, we who are many form one body. Each member belongs to all the others. If you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you, you don't just belong to God, but rather each of us belongs to every other. We belong to each other. We are a family. We're in this family together, and we really do need each other. God says, I want you to, to help each other. I want you to support each other, encourage each other. And our primary program for helping people feel connected is not the worship service. You could come to worship service every Sunday. You could come for five years straight every Sunday and never really, never really meet anybody. It's only as we get involved in the other ministries of the church that we really get to know each other on a deeper level. Okay, thirdly, my church helps me to fortify my faith. Fortify means to strengthen or develop or reinforce. We have breakfast cereals that are fortified with vitamins. Even Twinkies are fortified with something so you can eat them without feeling guilty. Pop-Tarts are fortified with vitamin A so we can say that they're, health they're healthy food. It means something has been reinforced. That's what a church family does. It helps you clarify your values. It helps you set your priorities. It helps you figure out what do I really believe. A church family helps me to develop character and conviction and integrity. If you don't have a church family, where are you going to go to develop those kinds of things? Where are you going to go to figure out what it is you really believe? Developing conviction and character. God says a church family is designed to help you fortify your faith. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 says, Therefore let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ, 
and be taken forward to maturity. Probably as a pastor, the question I'm asked more often than any other question is this one. How do I know God's will for my life? How do I know what God wants me to do? Well, one thing I do know is that God wants you to grow spiritually. He wants you to mature, to grow up. He wants you uh, to mature, and, and he doesn't want you to be a spiritual weakling. He wants you to be strong spiritually. Can you be physically old and, mature, and spiritually mature? Of course you can. How do we grow spiritually, though? Well, by getting into the Bible, by learning to apply the Scripture's teachings to my life. The church helps me to do that, to fortify my faith. Next, my church helps me, fourthly, in that it helps me to find ministry. You weren't put on earth just to take up space. God expects you to give something back. He expects you to have a contribution or make a contribution with your life. He gave you certain abilities and talents and gifts and a, a background that he expects you to use to help other people. Anytime you use your talents or what you know, your intelligence to, to help somebody else, we call that ministry. You were made to minister. I pastored a church in Prince Edward Island, and when you walked into the foyer of the church, right across the wall, it said, every member a minister. One day we're all going to stand before God, and he's going to say, what was your ministry? What did you do on earth to give back, to make a contribution? The church is here to help you discover and develop your ministry. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do things he planned for us long ago. The Greek word for masterpiece, there is the word poinia, poinium. And it's the word for poem. We get our English word for poem from that word. It's a work of art. You're one of a kind. You are God's masterpiece. You are God's work of art. There's nobody else like you. You're the part of the jigsaw puzzle that would be missing. You're a, a masterpiece. God created you. He wanted you on this earth for a purpose, for a ministry. And then he says, I want you to make your life count. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 5 tells us, there are different kinds of service, but together you form the body of Christ. And each one of you is a necessary part. I talk to so many people today who feel like they're unnecessary, insignificant. They feel like my life is, well, it just doesn't matter. One of the secrets of self-esteem is this. Figure out what it is that God created you to be and be it. Find your ministry and do it. Then you'll be saying, this is what I'm here for. This is why God put me here. And then fifthly, my church helps me to fulfill my life mission. This is different from your ministry. God says, I will build the church to help you focus on, on God and to face life's problems and to fortify your faith and to find your ministry and to fulfill your mission. There's a purpose for your life. You were put here on earth for a reason, and he chose exactly where you would be born, exactly how you would be born, and, and all, these, all of these things you can 
you have no control over. Because he's creating you for his purpose, for a mission. He created you for a purpose. God says, I want you to fulfill this mission. Romans chapter 10 verses 13 and 14 tells us anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, but how can they believe if they've never heard? And how can they hear unless someone tells them? That makes sense. There's no greater accomplishment than leading somebody to Christ, leading them to Jesus. You are a believer because somebody cared enough to tell you. Who have you cared enough about to tell? Who have you cared enough about to tell them the good news about Jesus Christ? That all your sins can be forgiven. The Bible says we are ambassadors for Christ. That is part of your mission. But your life is more than just telling other people about Christ. These benefits are connected to God's goal for your life, God's mission for your life. God wants you to magnify his name in worship. God wants you to be a member of his family. He wants you to be a model of maturity and character. God wants you to be a, a minister of his grace. And he wants you to be a messenger of his love. This is God's five purposes for your life. This is God's purpose for the church. All five of these are benefits of the church family. If you don't get involved and join a church family, where do you intend to have those five needs met? Name me one other place in the world where you can go and have these five things met in one place. God designed the family for you. There are many good churches here in the Annapolis Valley. There are a lot of good churches here, and you need to be involved in one of them. If you can't bring yourself to be involved and to uh, love Black Rock Baptist Church, it's your duty to find a church that you can love and be committed to. Find a family and say, that's going to be my place. That's going to be my family. But remember, no church is perfect. If you ever find a perfect church, don't join it. Because the moment you join it, it won't be perfect anymore. There's no perfect church. But let me assure you that here at Black Rock, we're striving to be a healthy church. And we would welcome you to be part of this family. I want you to know I really consider it a privilege to be part of this church family. And I want you to know how much I really do love being pastor of this church. I feel at home here. The past two and a half years have been especially wonderful for me. I moved here to the valley thinking I was going to retire. Well, God had other plans. I look forward to the future years together. I love you all. I love my church. I really believe that we are standing on the banks of tomorrow, that we're on the edge of something good, something wonderful that God wants to do. Things in God's church that none of us have ever dreamed of. I don't know a more significant thing to do with your life than to be part of the church, part of the body of Christ, God's family. Because every minute you invest, every dollar you give, every ministry you serve in is making a difference for eternity. You cannot say that about anything else. The kingdom of God is going to outlast your career, your hobbies. It's going to outlast your family. It's going to outlast the, the government and political involvement and anything else. If you know something better to invest your life in, would you please tell me about it? 
If you know something that will have more impact a thousand years from today, tell me about it, would you? I decided a long time ago I was not going to waste my life. You and I ought to consider it a privilege to be part of God's wonderful family, the church. I know people who dreamed all their lives of being part of a church like this. It's, it's a privilege, but it's also a great responsibility. How do you join the church family? Well, this is what they did in the book of Acts. It says they were baptized and they joined with other believers and they worshiped together regularly at the, at the temple and they met in groups in their homes and they shared together in communion. My challenge to you is to take that next step. Whatever that is for you, take the next step and do it today. God bless. Have a wonderful day. And until we meet again, let's continue to exchange prayers daily.